Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome to Civilization 6. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about starting your early game strategies, um, adapting to your circumstances, and how to get the most out of your start location, and what a build order actually might look like when you're playing against the AI on Deity. Now, I do have a few mods activated here. Most of them are just UI mods. Some of them do have a technical gameplay impact, but um, that would be Got Lakes. Most of them are just UI mods, so don't worry about that. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and create a game on uh, a completely random map, a standard size continents map, which is probably what most people are going to play. I'll start it on Deity, and we could just do a little bit of like a masterclass tutorial style thing. I don't care which Civ I'm playing. I don't care what, you know, scenario I'm in. I think it would be kind of interesting though. Um, and this is something I would maybe like to do in the future. It would be to go through and do a whole bunch of start locations with each and every Civ in the game. Um, like here's how you, you know, analyze a start location as the Cree. And this is how Georgia wants to interpret the world. Here are like the early game objectives of Georgia. Here are like the few different build orders Georgia can do. So let's take a look at this start location. Um, there's kind of a number of things wrong with this start location, but there's also a few things right with this start location. We don't have a whole lot of hills, so let's go ahead and just do like a hill search. Oh, actually, I'm completely wrong. There's a ton of hills here. Never mind. Uh, there's a lot of hills. We got plenty. Uh, so we're good to go. This is actually, I would say this is a very playable start location. One big problem is a lack of early game food. However, the Cree do have, you know, uh, the meek wap, which is unlocked fairly early into the tech tree, right? At pottery, which is also where you get your free trader. So you could make use of the meek wap alongside uh, some bonus resources, which actually seem to be lacking here too. But this is like fairly standard of what you're going to see in like start locations, uh, which are not amazing. So let me go ahead and open up the fire tuner. And I'm just going to kind of talk about like why this map kind of sucks. So I'm going to reveal the entire terrain. And you can see here, like this is my start location. Let me, let me just shift enter to give the AI a chance to take their turns. And the thing that I want to talk about here is that in Civilization VI, with the standard default settings, um, without any map mods or any balance mods, there are what we would like to call, there's, there's winners and losers when it comes to start location. And let me tell you, this start location we have is a loser because uh, just look at the lack of bonus resources, look at the lack of food, look at the lack of forests for chopping. Now keep in mind, Chopping is one of the most important mechanics in the game for you to master. And honestly, the simplest way to master chopping is to chop every single tile that you see. Now, there are times when you want to save chops or not chop, but like, imagine if I had spawned down here on this peninsula. Look how bad this land is, okay? There's barely any forests, there's barely any trees, there's barely any rainforests. Um, look at, look at Pokrovka over here. Yeah, sure, they started next to the Matterhorn, which is like a really nice natural wonder, but the actual land is trash. We've got like really crappy floodplain, a handful of bonus resources, a handful of forests and then compared to like Jerusalem. Jerusalem's land's amazing. Tons of forests, a decent number of hills, a decent number of rainforests. Hungary, probably the best start location I've seen so far, right? Two food, two production tiles, three food, two production tiles, three food, one production tiles, just really high yield tiles, right? Compare that to my start. One food, one production, one food, two production, one food, two production, one food, two production, right? These are these are very, very weak tiles. I'm on the edge of tundra. I'm on the edge of desert. I mean, sure, I can get a good Petra, but a good Petra doesn't get you into the game. It's something you achieve in the middle of the game, and hopefully that it pays off. And like, even over here for the Gaul, like they have a way better start than me in this game. Let's have a look. Uh, Canada got a really bad start. They're not even on Tundra, which is where they want to be. And the Tundra that they do have, have almost no woods on it. And similarly, if we go check out Mali, Mali's not even on their normal desert area. So they're, they're struggling too. So this is kind of what I want to talk about. The reason you're having bad games of Civ 6 is because your map settings suck. So what I want you to do is exit to menu. And I'm going to give you the settings that you should almost always use. So the, the two most important settings here when it comes to creating a world is to set rainfall to wet and world age to new. This adds so much more quality to the map. Now, this does make it harder for the AI, but it just makes the game a lot more playable. If you want to make the game harder, set it to old world and arid, okay? You will not have a good time. So uh, that's why I say new and wet, that is the best way to play Civ. These two settings are incredibly important. And honestly, I, I also like to do abundant resources. I think it makes the game more interesting. It makes the game more dynamic. But if you don't want to do that, you, yeah, it's fine. You don't have to. Um, I, de I definitely feel like the game just plays better if you play with these settings. All these other settings, not super important. Just doesn't matter as much. But abundant resources, new world age, wet rainfall, 
it will significantly improve the quality of the map. And let me go show you that. Now, I want to be very precise here. I'm not saying that it completely eliminates the ability to get a bad start. You can still get bad starts, but it makes the average start much better. So you're much more likely to get a good start. So I want you to just look like drink in this start location compared to the previous one. I have so many options about where I want to settle my city. I could move off of the coast onto the cattle and get a really nice three food base tile for my city center. I could move onto the marble and get a one culture base tile with a two two tile, with a two food two production tile. Um, a two food two production tiles, these are what I would call standard tiles. These are tiles that you want to have inside your first two rings of your city. We don't actually have that many two food two production tiles here. We have one and two in range of this city. So kind of a, you know, mediocre start. We have a uh, a 1 3 tile, which is pretty damn good. Um, but let's go ahead and reveal the map again. And we'll just kind of look at the map and get a feel for how it looks. Now, this might actually be the most interesting continent, continents map I've ever seen. I've never seen a continents map generate like this, like four distinct islands. Um, but just like look at the quality of Scotland's start, right? A good sprinkle of resources, a good sprinkle of woods, there's a natural wonder nearby, a good sprinkle of luxuries. Um, let's take a look at Greece's. Greece's kind of a weak start, but the tundra has better quality. There's more forests in the tundra. There's more bonus resources in the tundra. There's a really nice natural wonder nearby. Um, let's take a look at Ethiopia. Ethiopia? Nice luxury resources, some good bonus resources, a good amount of forests nearby. Now, the quality of the land isn't amazing, but you can definitely see there's no like huge sparse areas where there's a lack, like a big lack of resources. So honestly, th these are the settings that I would just recommend in almost every game because it will it will just significantly increase the quality of the game that you're playing. Um, even if you take a look here at Sweden, Sweden start location, look at all these pearls that are around. They could do a really interesting coastal game. They have lovely land over here. It's not like super dense or super amazing, but there's like a sprinkling of hills. There's a sprinkling of marshes. There's a sprinkling of resources. There's plantations. There's deer. There's diamonds. And we, we haven't even revealed things like horses. We haven't even revealed things like iron. Those, those things are also going to improve the quality the quality of your land. And your your land quality can be thought of as basically, how many yields can I get per tile per worker? You know, like how much can I get out of a tile? Uh, but I, I think it's pretty obvious to me that like I should move on to the marble and settle there. I know I'm playing with the, you know, fog of war off and all that sort of stuff, but that's, that's not really important for what we want to talk about today. Um, So the reason that I want to settle on the marble is because I'm playing Australia. So Australia gets plus three housing in coastal cities. And their campuses, commercial hubs, holy sites, and theater squares get plus one yield in tiles with charming appeal. Now, if we hit the, I think it's three key, you could see all of this bright green area. This are tiles with charming appeal. Um, I believe it's plus three in breathtaking. Yes. So the, the light green area here, that would get us plus one yield on all of those districts. The, the sorry, the, the light green area would be plus one. The bright green would be plus three. Now, so we're going to settle on the marble for a variety of reasons. The first one being when we settle on the marble, we actually get plus one culture per turn in this city. Normally this city produces a 2.3 culture per turn baseline, but because we settled on the marble, we actually get access to that marble. You can see up here, it's in our luxury resources. And the marble can be traded to the AI. So like, theoretically, I can come in here and be like, hey, what do you want to buy my marble for? Now, obviously, I, I don't want to sell my AI, my marble because I, you know, I can't. But also, playing Australia, I have really good yields. And then I have a 2-2 tile and I can potentially buy some more tiles. Like this deer over here is a good tile. Uh, so when you're working a tile, I want you to think about um, the amount of surplus that you're producing. And there's kind of two important things that go into a surplus. Um, there's opportunity cost, which is what is the cost of working this tile versus working this tile? And then what is just the cost of working the tile? So every tile in the game, every citizen in your city up costs two food per turn. You can see here, this city has one citizen, which means it consumes two food. So the price to work a two food tile with a citizen is two food. So that means this tile is producing two food, the citizen eats two, so the net output is zero food, and then you get a net output of two production. So when you people people look at this tile here and they're like, oh, this is only one more production than this tile. That's like, you know, these tiles are like pretty similar. And it's like, no, not even close. These tiles are far and away because this tile right now, it costs two food to work it. It produces two food. So that's zero food surplus and one production surplus which means this tile produces a one production surplus. This tile produces a two production surplus. This tile right here is literally twice as good. It is, I want to say that again, this tile is twice as good. And similarly, this deer tile here, right? 
It costs two food to work this tile. It produces one, but it also produces three food. So it has a minus one food cost. Like that's the surplus. The surplus is this is a net drain on your food economy, but it produces three food in surplus. So you have to pick up that extra food from somewhere and your city won't grow at a reasonable pace if you're not picking up all your food. Hopefully that kind of explains the concept of like tile economy. And you want to be thinking about tile economy when it comes to where you settle. Um, so now that we've, we've talked a little bit about settling and how to settle cities and all that sort of stuff, let's talk about opening build orders. In this particular map, it's not going to matter. So let's go ahead and just like do a quick restart. We'll, we'll get a new sieve, we'll get a new map, and I'll be able to talk a little bit about like super early build order stuff and what different what your first, like, f what the first five things that you build in a game are going to define about your game, as well as your first couple of technology choices. Okay, so this is a little bit of a crappy start location because we're settled on pretty bad desert. And on Deity, it can be quite hard to get pyramids, but I think we can make it work. We do have a pretty good two food, two production, three gold tile on the truffles. And we also have a decent copper tile to settle on. I don't love my studying location, but this copper tile is actually really good to settle on because... It's a two, it's a one food, two production tile. When the city center is settled, it will turn it into a two food, two production tile. And normally a city center, by the way, if I search, if I search the city center, normally it is a two, uh, two food, one production tile. Does that not show here? No, it doesn't. Okay. Um, normally city centers are, are two food, one production, right? But if you settle on a plains hill, it'll become two food, two production. Really, really nice. You also have this two food, two production and three gold tile. That's a fantastic start to the game. That's like quite a bit more gold. It's actually a really high gold start, right? We're, we've got five more gold per turn. That's twice the normal amount of gold per turn that we would have. Um, it would normally take us like 40 turns to buy a builder. We're going to be able to get one in like 20, which is pretty damn good, all things considered. The first couple of things you want to build in a game are really kind of going to be dependent on a few different things. So I would say in 95% of the games, if you're doing anything related to faith, you want to get two scouts almost immediately. And then you want to get one settler and then you want to build a holy site. This is because you want to get a religion ASAP. And that's the only way to get a religion in Civ 6. And religion is really, really powerful. Um, particularly when you're playing on Deity, it's really the only way to guarantee a religion. You can get religions other ways. A little bit more of a safer build where you d aren't going for a holy site based game is where you can go like double scout into double settler. That would be the standard opening in my opinion. Double scout into double settler and then a monument in every city that you settle. So it would look like scout scout, settler settler, monument. And that would be like the standard opener. And then by the time you have those three cities down, you would either start building your campuses or like your, you would start working towards your theater squares or you would build another three settlers and expand your empire or consider setting up for a war or whatever. So yeah, the other way that you can do this is to go either scout slinger as your opener or slinger slinger or um, just one slinger into monument as an opener. That's a totally viable thing to do. You can go like Slinger Monument, Settler, Settler. This is not what I would consider to be a recommended build, but it can work if you have like a relatively strong opening hand and good tiles that you can improve with an early builder purchase or something like that. Um, I would say generally though, 99% of games get two scouts into two settlers. That's going to be your most default basic opener. Um, there are like cases where you might want to go like Warrior or Slinger, um, particularly if you're playing someone like the new Caesar. Um, but yeah, let's, let's, like, let's just do two scouts and th this is the build that will carry you through almost every single game that isn't faith-based in Civilization VI. And you want to be looking for scouts and you always want to be checking, okay, what does this city-state do? This city-state Singapore gives me plus one production my capital when I'm building buildings. You also want to be looking around for wonders. Well, Singapore will let me build wonders and also, um, you know, my cities receive plus two production for every foreign civilization they have a trade route to. And we want to be looking for, particularly in the early game, our goal is to grab as many tribal villages as possible. And the reason we want to find tribal villages and we want to find other civilizations is because we want to get era score. If we can get 25 era score, we can get a golden age. And the getting a classical era golden age is honestly one of the most game defining things you can do because it can be the difference between launching into the game with extreme success and like slopping your way into the game uh, sluggishly. So always, always, always be looking for that era score. Be look Like the second that I notice a barb camp in this area, I'm moving my warrior over there because you can clear a barb camp with a single warrior. It's super easy. Now you are going to want to adjust your build slightly as you explore. If you encounter more than one barb camp, you might want to switch a scout for a slinger. You might want to switch a scout for a warrior. That's all going to be context dependent. It's going to be something you learn over time. Um, but generally, you're going to be looking 
for Scout, Scout, Settler, Settler. Like we found the Fountain of Youth. Finding Natural Wonders, super good for era score. But we're not actually going to go for astrology here. I just researched that just for the sake of um, example. I'm going to send this scout to the north. I'll send this scout to the west. And you're coming along this way. And so there's like basically a few things that we're looking for in the early game. We're looking for natural wonders for us to pick up. We're looking for tribal villages. We're looking for barb camps. We're looking for city states. We're looking for other players so that we can kind of map out the sort of bonuses and things that we're going to have to be ready for. Almost always, you want to get a pantheon. So discipline allows you to fight barbs more effectively. God King allows you to get a pantheon. You can plug in survey sometimes if you find no barb camps nearby, but if you're ever killing a barb camp, it's just good to have. It's good to have discipline. It's useful. You almost always want to go early empire. Foreign trade into early empire is the is the way to go. And you're also looking for places to settle your cities. I cannot stress this enough. You need you need a good settling plan and you need a good settling pattern. And so I'm seeing right here, there's a nice plains hill, by the way, detailed map tax allows you to, with shift A, you can place pins. It's a, it's a good it's a good old thing. So do keep that in mind. So I would maybe settle on this Plains Hill because that would get this second city plus two, pr pl plus two production on the city center. It also kind of forms me a little bit of a barrier with Samaria, who I'm going to try to declare a friendship with so that I can keep him from declaring war on me. It's not a foolproof plan. He may still declare war on me. And we cleared a barb camp. And because the barb camp was within six tiles of one of our cities, we got three error score. We're already up to 13 error score. So we just need to get like a little bit more. If we can get 12 more in 23 turns, we're doing amazingly. Like, here's another tribal village for us to pick up. There's potentially more continents for us to discover. I'm going to put my scout into defensive terrain in the hope that that means when this scout attacks him, he survives. Quite surprised that that barb scout chose to attack there. Uh, but it looks like we did, in fact, win. We should be able to step down now and pick up this tribal village and level up. And look how many city-states we found off the back of these two scouts. We have so much scouting information about the land, about where we might want to go, where we might want to settle. It's fantastic. Um, animal husbandry and mining are two... Pretty important early game things to pick up. Be careful with researching animal husbandry because horse horse tiles can block your um what's it? Your horse tiles can block your um your district placement. If you get an unfortunate horse tile. But you know, I was thinking of actually moving the city down onto the cattle, because then this leaves this spot over here open for a settlement later if I choose. I kinda like that idea. It's kinda cute. Pick up this tribal village, pick up a promotion. Almost always. It's good to go for the forest promotion, but hills is also totally valid. I, I kind of just do it based on what's like nearby. Like if I see two hills nearby, I take hill promotion just so I can get individually turn by turn better exploration. But yeah, I'm going to settle on the cattle because the cattle give me three food and one production. And then the basic transition here is you get monuments in the newly settled cities. You can also like, let's say you have a neighbor who's a little bit threatening. You can go for slingers and switch over to craftsmanship, plug in a gog and go for... An early three slinger build. That would be my recommendation. Is you, you can, like you should be making your way towards early empire. But if things are looking a little bit sketch, don't be afraid to switch over to craftsmanship. But yeah, this is going to be like the structure of most of your strong early game openers. And really what you're looking to do is to try to form a triangle or a line of cities that all reinforce each other with loyalty. And in particular... You want to like guard space. So you can see I settled south and this forms a line with my city. Pikun Mapu and Chingueti. That means that this space behind me here is protected. And similarly, I'm going to settle a city potentially, you know, just south of these bananas because it's near the tea, it's near the bananas, it's got really nice sugar as well, two luxuries, and it's on a hill, it's in a good defensive location, and it blocks Congo settling any closer to me because one, two, three, this tile here would be blocked. I, I wouldn't want to settle any closer because I want to use defensive terrain to my advantage, um, but I would settle right here. And then I've, I've drawn a line between Singapore to my capital, my capital to Chingueti, which basically makes all of this land over here very easily settled and claimed by me. So hopefully that kind of gives you a really good, you know, quick lesson on how to have more interesting early games and how to actually play an early game depending on the situation you get into. And, you know, I'm trying to give very general lessons rather than like very specific things. Don't get tunnel visioned into trying to settle this tile. This is, tile is totally fine if Sumeria settles it. Just make sure you have enough units to defend or a friendship or whatever, right? You always have to assess the situation carefully. But yeah, I just wanted to do like a quick throwaway video because I'm going on vacation and uh, hopefully it contained a few thoughts and philosophies in my brain that uh, will be helpful to you guys. I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.